God's word remains the only tool for molding, shaping, aligning, and making a man to be like Jesus. God's desire is for everyone to grow into the fullness of the stature of his son Jesus. And this can only be achieved through the undiluted word of God preached in God's own way. Remember, you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. Sit back and listen to the engrafted word of God that is able to save your soul. May the Lord bless you as you listen and respond positively. Use the rest of your life to pursue the purpose of God. Use the rest of your life to pursue the purpose of God. The rest of your life to pursue the purpose of God. Young lady, young man, old man, you don't know how short your life may be. But I will advise you, he said, this message is an advice. For the wise, for the people that want to hear, use the rest of your life to pursue the purpose of God. We will be looking at it together by the grace of God. I don't intend to take your time, but I know the Lord is going to pierce my heart and your heart. Isaiah chapter 40, quickly come with me. Isaiah chapter 40, let's speak from there. Isaiah chapter 40, beautiful scripture. Very beautiful word of God. Isaiah chapter 40. Use the rest of your life. Either short. Either long. To pursue. The purpose. Of the Lord. Use. The rest of your life. Isaiah 40. From verse 6. Now can we go. Isaiah chapter 40. We are going to read together. Verse 6. Verse 6. Can we read verse 6? Verse 7? Verse 8? Can we go together? The voice said, Cry! And he said, What shall I cry? All flesh is grass, and all the goodliness thereof is of flowers of the field. Verse 7. The grass wither, the flower faded, because the Spirit of the Lord blows upon it. Surely the people. No, is that loud in your Bible? Surely the people is what? Which people is still talking about? Ask your neighbor. Are you the one they are talking about? <laughs> you don't like to hear this. You will spend four hours to decorate this body. Do you know something, friend? The devil rejoice when you stand before the mirror for three hours decorating yourself. The devil takes pleasures in that. He know that those three hours, there are three hours of waste. We decorate external body, but we don't decorate the hinama. Devil we never want us to hear this. But you know, I can't hide it from you because our life is sold out for him. Devil will be so glad to see you decorating externally with facial, cosmetics, and every apparatus of life. But we say, don't touch the inner man. That's why you see the inner man getting weak every day. Prayer life becoming, prayer becoming difficult. Fellowship is becoming a problem. When it comes to things of God, your spirit is down. When it comes to service, your spirit is low. But when it comes to things of the world, you are at the top of every situation. These are the manipulation of the devil. These are the trick of the devil to make sure that a man does not prosper in this life and the life to start is coming. Surely, all people, they are grass. Come and see me, maybe in the next 40 years, if I have died. If they will give you a point to come and see where I am buried, you will understand truly that this flesh is only what is grass. The Bible say, but the Bible says something naked, you came out of your mother's womb. 
What happened to you? Naked. What will happen to you? You will go. He said, he said, the flesh will return to the dust as it come. Why the spirit go back to God? I say to you, vanity upon vanity. How many things are vanity? Surely all flesh are how I wish you will know this this morning. That what you are going to become in life, this flesh is nothing but grass. That one will give you an insight to prepare for your eternity. There are some passages in the Bible that when you hear it, your heart is trembling. So when you know that you are becoming a grass, where do you have a room to do malice? Where do you have a room to do adulteries and do immoralities? When you know that you are coming, you are becoming a grass. Surely everybody is a grass. They were showing is he Muritala Muhammad picture of on Valent on the thirteenth. And they were showing what he has done, how he was trying to bring up Nigeria. And I say, truly this man was alive before. But now, if you can go to the burial ground where they bury him, and that burial ground is not taken care of, grasses has grown up from there. Are we together? Come on, talk to me. Are we together? They called me, is it my brother, some months ago, some years ago. He said, I should come on that uh, the burial ground of my mother is bringing, maybe it's bringing weed or something like that. <laughs> and say, the woman who have gone, have gone. The anyone who has gone is gone. But I don't want to pursue vanity. Surely, everybody is grass. And what does he tell you tonight? He's telling you that, excuse me, if you miss your way to heaven, you are a miserable man. If I miss my way to heaven, very miserable I have in life. You know, the man of God was preaching on Friday night when we came for the meeting. He said there are two things he fear most. And those are the two things I fear also. You know, I've been telling you, God should just have mercy upon me. I don't want to go to hell. I don't, I don't want it at all. In fact, I don't want my enemy to go to hell, talk less of me. The man of God was saying two things he's afraid of in this world. He said, number one, after he has done the will of God, after he has shown Jesus to people, after many people have found their way to heaven, and he will come to the presence of God at the gate, and God will say, I don't know you depart from me. It's miserable. Ah, it's miserable. Number two, is how can God be doing something in this life and I'm not part of God's program? If you are not on the program of God, it means that you are running with satanic program. You cannot be on fence. If you are not working with God to advance the kingdom of God in this generation, it means you are already working with satanic program. There is no two will about that. It's either you are on the side of the law or you are on the other side. Your life will finish. Let me tell you something. My life will finish. <laughs> there is a day I am born. That's a day I'm going to die. And you can't stop it. Because no man has power to stop death on the day of his death. I'm saying this, I'm crying like this. If your life is continuous, I won't bother myself. I say, or if you have two lives, I won't bother myself. But I want to tell this morning, it's only one life you have. Only one life. And I wish you would use the life well. Because the Bible says, 70, 70 years our years. They say, if it is up to Haiti, we are spending in sorrow and tribulation and distress. They say, because of this, my father, teach me to number my days so that I can apply my heart to wisdom. Can we read verse 8 quickly? Verse 8. The grass. Oh, come on. You are not following me. Are we together? Now, can we read verse 8? The grass wither, the flower faded. But the word of our God shall stand forever. Forever. I want you to think about life. If I may ask you, what is this life up to in your sight? What are you learning from this life? I can't remember how many people died when I was undergraduate. 
I can't remember how many of my friends who have died even in the service here. I can't remember how many have died after the service here. I can't remember them. Numerous people, young, young boys, intelligent boys, perish with their knowledge. The devil has no respect for you except there is a wall of fire surrounding your life. It doesn't matter who you are, a professor under Satan's feet without Christ Jesus. A billionaire moving around without Jesus is under the devil and the devil can torture him. Use the rest of your life to pursue the purpose of God. If I may ask you this question, this singular life God has given to you, what are you using it to pursue now? Because that's the question. All of you seated this morning, you know, I had 100 years to your years. Oh, you say it's too small, it's too small. In the name of Jesus, I help you. I had 150 years to your years. Say amen to that. Ah. Say amen to that. You don't want 150 with this one. You don't want to be aged so that they can be putting you inside sun in the morning and say you are taking vitamin C. In the next 100 years, many of you will not be here. Many of you will never be here. We should have gone. Either go to hell or go to heaven. But I pray that you will not find your way to hell. I say, I pray you will not find your way to hell. I'm not trying to terrify you, but I'm telling you what's coming to heaven because all flesh, they are grass. And you cannot change the word of God. Now, listen to me. The only people that can stand forever are those people that dwell the will of God. Those that live their right life to pursue God's purpose. Those are the people. Matthew chapter 7, quickly. Matthew chapter 7. Matthew chapter 7. Come with me this morning. <clears throat> Look at it. Matthew chapter 7, verse 21. Not everyone that said unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of God. But he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. Can we read together? Look at the board. Can you read together with me? Verse 21. Want to go? Excuse me from that passage. Who will live forever? Who, who will live forever? Those that do what? Those that use their life to do what? To pursue what? The purpose of God. Those that use their life to pursue the purpose of God will live forever. Now, we have not finished. Verse 22. Can you go with me? Verse 22. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have you not prophesied in your name? And in your name, we have cast out the devils. And in your name, then verse 23 together now. And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me. That will, be that will not be your voice, Daddy. I'm praying with you with all my heart. That will never be the voice that come upon you in the name of Jesus. Sir. How does it look like? Listen to me. Every Sunday services you are here. Tuesday Bible study you are here. And you are applying the word of God and it's working. Every Wednesday you are here for preview. You are here for one thing or the other. Every Thursday you are here for prayer meeting. Every Friday, Holy Ghost service, night VG, you are here. Saturday, you are here for other meeting. Another Sunday you are here. You have sold your life for things of heaven. You have sold your life for God. That even if anybody comes to your house, they can't see you. They will say, where is she? He has gone to church. Where is she? He has gone to church. Where is she? They have gone to church. They say, can't he carry his bed and mattress and go to church and be living there? And when your hand comes, we celebrate you. 
Oh, our brother has gone home. What a committed, what a dedicated, what a wonderful brother, what a wonderful sister. And we put, we put the person in the grave and they appear before the Lord. I say, bring the book of remembrance. And they say, yes, yes, yes. Very pathetic. And they say, we don't know you. <laughs> I find out that it's a small, small thing that makes men to go to hell now. Small, small thing. Small, small, small thing that, you know, I told you of a woman. I think I've told you of this woman who have no money. Maybe she has no money to buy, to buy matches. And she went to a friend. Please, can you borrow me matches to use to cook food? And the woman gave her matches. Take it. Go and cook your food. And she took the matches. She came to her apartment. Strike the matches. Strike one of them. And prepare. And when she was returning the matches, she took, I think, 12 number of matchstick. So that I will not go back to my friend again. I will not worry, worry her again. Let me take 12, 12, 12, what? 12 sticks and put for my home so that I will not worry her. And she returned the matchbox to the woman and life continues. Not knowing that heaven has recorded it down. And when she died, she was happy that she has finished work. She has done well. She has done everything well. And at the gate, they say you cannot cross this place. When you get to the gate and they say you cannot cross, you know you're already finished. Ha! Huh. You don't know how you feel. When you get to the gate and an angel says, excuse me, you cannot cross this level, you know you're already finished. Because at the gate there is no mercy anymore. At the gate there is no repentance. At the gate there is no, please sir, let me return back. Because they have, they have won death. That when you strike a man dead, don't re allow him to return again. And that's what the Bible says, is appointed to man. How many times to die? Once to die. Would this woman live a good life? Very clean life. Very beautiful life. And when she got to the gate, she said, excuse me. And they just said, excuse me, madam, you cannot pass through this level. I said, what? What is this? I, I live a ladder, please go. Uh, you know, you know, you know my life. And they say, open the screen, let me see. Everything you are doing, you are going to see yourself on the screen. Ah, everyone is well organized. Everyone is well, well organized. The, all those things you are doing in secret, we don't know, we shall soon see it. Everybody will say, ah, pastor. But sorry, you are lost forever. And they open the screen. And they were looking at the life of the woman, very beautiful life. Until the day she went to borrow matches from the woman. And as she took the matches, she was returning back. She took 12 sticks. She is looking at herself clearly. And as she got to that point, and the angel was watching with her, and she saw herself. And at that point, when she returned the box, and she didn't tell the woman, they stopped. Say, now. What can you say about that? I said, you went, the angel was saying, you went and take a matchbox. Yes. After using the matches, you took 12 sticks. And the angel said, when you took those 12 sticks, did you tell the owner? <laughs> there are questions everyone will ask you, you can't answer them. That's my fear. There are questions, in fact, there are questions heaven will ask you, you will become a don't do united, you can't do anything. They say, now you took 12 matches. Did you tell the owner? Did you tell the woman that you took matches from her? He said, no, it's my friend. He said, don't you read in the Bible, a thief, you will not go to heaven. He said, what you have done is stealing. Somebody says, stealing is different from corruption. He says, stealing is not corruption. They don't know what they are saying. They say, what you have done, that is stealing. And it has been written in the word of God. No harm robber, no thief, no unclean thing shall enter into the kingdom. Because of this, depart. As she cried, as she went, 12 matches, excuse me. How much do they say 12 matches in, in the market? Someone say, I'm not fornicating, I'm not doing adultery, I'm not uh, instituting, I'm not doing this thing, I'm not doing this thing. <laughs> you better watch. The man that is watching you is cleverer than you. 
The man that wants to cross your feet is closer, is clever than you. If God will not help you on this journey, I can see the cries in hell. And the woman went only because of 12 matches. 12 matches, I don't think it's up to 10 naira in the market. I don't think it's up to 10 naira. And a woman will go to her because of 5 naira. Is that not enough to think about? Is that not enough for a man to think about that? Look, this is my single life. I must spend it well. And you think things are just going like that. Let me tell you, let me tell you. The organization and administration in heaven is different from organization and administration in the world. Heaven, they deal with justice and righteousness. Heaven, they deal with straightforwardness and honesty. There's nothing like this in heaven. No, 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 no. If I die today, I will stand before them one by one and say, Well, can we see him? And they will put it from the day I was born. Before you get to that place, he said, You will get to a point that when you appear before the angel, you begin to tell them what you have done. I was born in 1932 and I went to Harvard College and from there I stole my mother's money and from there I become a doctor and from there I defy many ladies and from there I'm the one that killed this one. You will say nobody put one in your mouth but something is telling you to push it out. After you have said everything, if there are things you have forgotten, I say, excuse me sir, I forgot to tell you this one, I killed her again and I buried her. You will say it yourself, nobody will force it out from you. The judgment is tough. So those that want to go to heaven, I hope you prepare yourself with God's mercy. So as to go with him. All flesh is and I won't I won't deceive you because I'm going also. And you will not say, Excuse me, excuse me, that's our pastor. They will say, Which pastor? Shut up your mouth. Which pastor? Pastor is taking his own judgment. Remember, it's taking photo. Ah! Remember the word of God. The Bible say, "For the judgment of God will start from the house of God." If scarcely the righteous are saved, <laughs> my fear. Oh, we never enter to the kingdom of God. Abominable people will never enter into the kingdom of God. Will you not repent to their return? My message is say, return and repent because you are just under the grass. A man called, I won't mention his name. This man has 27 wives. And once, once she wants to, he wants to, he want to demonstrate, he wants to play his, his game, his, his drum, he wants to, he want to entertain people. You see the man only in Nika, only in underwear. And 27 wives surrounded her, surrounded him. And they will move around. And with Igbo, you know the meaning of Igbo? You know the meaning of Igbo? Igbo means Indian help. I think there's no cocaine that time. And we take his Indian help. And as was playing, maybe he'll be spewing it upon those ladies, 27, dead man and dead woman. How will it look like when you finish your race, you go and meet them in hell? How does it look like? That people that are mad before they die. So you die, you go and meet them in the same place. God forbid, though. I don't know how you are looking at this life, but I begin to see the vanity of life. I can see the futility of life. I can see that truly of flesh is grass. Will you think of your life this morning? Come with me to James. Oh, 
James chapter 5. James chapter 5. Do you know this matter is more than having money, having riches, having wealth? Nobody asks you as, the, as you go. Nobody asks you that. James chapter 5. James chapter 5. Can you look at, I think verse, is it 14? It's beautiful scripture. James chapter 4, sorry. 4. Can we read verse 13 together? James chapter 5 verse 13. Are you there with me? Can you rise up and read it together? Let's rise and read together now. I want you to rise like me so that we can be understanding together. James chapter 5. Please rest upon your feet. Let's read together. Verse 13. James 5, 13. Now, can we go together now? Where to go? Go to now. Ye that say, today or tomorrow, we will what? Go into some city and continue via a year. And buy and sell and get gay. What is that? That is marketing. You are doing trading. Is that not trading? Buy, sell, make gay. Buy, sell, lose. But in your own game, you will not, you will not, you will not lose. I say you will not lose. So. Now, verse 14 now. Uh, we are us. You know not what shall be on tomorrow. For what is your life? It is even a vapor that appear for a little time and then what about vanish it away. It's okay. Excuse me. What is my life? From this place. What is my life? I'm not talking of your own. I'm talking of my own. What is your life? What? No, not your life. What is my life there? What is a vapor? What is a vapor? Eh, come on. Talk to me now. What is a vapor because of time? Eh? A mist, a dew. Have you seen in the Amatan time, Amatan period, you know something closes people's eyes like white? I want to ask you, can you use your hand to carry to pick that white? Why can't you use that to pick it? Because what? It's a vapor. When you are, when you are boiling hot water and you open the lid, what comes out is what? Vapor. When the vapor from the hot water disappear, you can gather them together again. Can you gather them together again? Your lives, like a vapor, appear for a short time. 70 years is a short time. After that, it disappear. Disappear to where? Use the rest of your life to pursue the purpose of God. Ecclesiastes chapter 9. Quickly, Ecclesiastes chapter 9. Thank you, Father. Lord, help us to think well. Help us to think well. Help us to live well for you. My lifetime, I will give God my lifetime, my lifetime, my lifetime. Oh. If I give God. He will take care of me. He will never, never. Hallelujah. If I give God my love, if I give God my love, He will take care of me. Oh, will He frustrate you? It will never, never ah. Uh, ah. If I give God my lifetime, if I give God my life, it will take care of my family. Oh. <laughs> it will never, never ah. Take my life and let it be oh consecrated to thee. I take my life and it be all in 
shall be the role in Men, let God possess you. Women, let God possess you. Youth, teenager, children, let God possess you. Don't let the devil possess you. Because calamity and disaster wait for those that work with the devil. And there are manipulation already. Will you return to God this morning? You are moving around like a sheep that's no shepherd. You are doing things the way you want to do it. Can I tell you, don't let the adversary cut short your life. He that does not do the will of God, we, their life will be cut short. God is helping us and to be carried with you. In this local assembly, the Lord is speaking to us and is helping us. But I'm praying and praying and praying and praying that labor of God on your life will not be wasted in the name of Jesus. Sir. Every day you come here, the Lord give you a new word. Why is he doing this? So that your journey from here to eternity can be smooth. Can be smooth journey. That as you are going, you are going as a journey through the land, singing as I go, ah, pointing souls to Calvary, to the crimson flow, ah, many arrows pierce my soul, but without with them, ah, but my Lord, lead me down, through him I must swing, oh, 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 I want to see him, Look upon this way, ah, there to save forever of his saving grace, ah, on the street of glory, oh, let me lay my book, oh, care so pass, oh, my life, ever to return, rise up and say after me, my life will not be wasted, oh, no. I release my life unto you, my short life. I hand over to you this morning. My love will not be wasted. Say it louder, amen. amen. As you are going like this on this journey, many arrows are piercing you. What are those arrows? Sometimes they are arrow of no food to eat. Sometimes there is arrow of typhoid. Sometimes there is arrow of barrenness. Sometimes there's a harrow of sorrow. Sometimes you wake up in the morning, you are just sorrowful. And you don't know the reason. It's an arrow. There are many arrows that fall upon a man as he's going to the naked land. <laughs> you think it's a joke? No, 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 no. No wonder the Bible says, from the time of John the Baptist in now, the kingdom of God do what? Survivor. Who pick it by force? The violence. Violence in righteousness. Many are all pierce our heart, but we are moving with the law. Ecclesiastes chapter 9, as in chapter 9, quickly look at me. <clears throat> Ecclesiastes chapter 9, turn to your Bible. Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 8. Let your garment be always white, white cloth. Garment is your life. Let your life be clean. They say, in the English verse, I say, cleanness is next to who? To goodness. Even the people of the world, they agree that. And that's why you begin to hear God say, blessed are the pure in heart. What happened to them? They shall see the Lord. Blessed are the pure. Who shall ascend to the hill of God? Who shall join his holy mountain? He that has a clean hands. He that has a pure heart. He that does not put his head to vanity, nor sworn deceitfully, the same shall receive the blessing of the law and vindication from the God, Lord of Israel. Then you begin to hear, lift up your head. One thing follows the other in the Bible. When you live a clean life, door will open for you. Lift up your head, O ye gay. Bastard, day will open. Because they have not born then to stay as you are moving to that place. Now listen, let a clean, the Bible said here, let your life be clean. Live a clean life. There is no alternative to this. If you are not living a clean life and you are praying, God will not listen. 
If I'm living a dirty life, if I'm living like a dog, and I'm going to church, I have come to defy that church. If I carry my body as a dog to a church, and I'm lifting a hand with the people, ah, a can has come to the church that day. If it is, do you know, if it is 10 people, 20 people that have a clean hands, you will see God's manifestation. He that has a clean life, I want to ask you, is your life clean? Thank God you have not died. You can still repent this morning. It doesn't matter how far the devil has battered you, has beaten you, he has kicked you, he has put you a stud, and you're already smelling. You have not died. It's still a time to repent and to return. He said, return to me, and I will return to you. But after death, you have no grace anymore. Your life is finished. But this morning, you can still repent and return to God. And God will still save you as a prodigal son and daughter. Come back home this morning. His mercy covered judgment. His mercy prevailed judgment. Please come home this morning. I don't know why the Lord is saying this, but I know there's a reason why the Lord is saying this morning. Let's come home. Let your garment be white. Let your life be clean. The Bible says in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 1, read it in the house. Having these wonderful promises, the promises of taking you to heaven, the promises of taking care of you, the promises of being your security, the promises of helping your life, the promises of showing mercy upon you, the promises of defending you before the enemy. Having these wonderful promises, he said, let us cleanse ourselves from all the filthiness of the flesh, all those that pollute our body physically, all the filthiness of the spirit, all those that defile our life from his side. He said, let us perfect holiness and the fear of God. Eyes have not seen. He has no heart. It has not entered to the heart of man. What God has prepared for those that come into glory. I pray you will end well. I say I pray you will end well. Your life must be clean. My life must be clean. There's no two way. And that's why Jesus said, my son, my daughter, when sinners entice you, what happened to you? Will you follow them? What does the Bible say? When you follow sinner, you will go the way they go. In fact, the Bible said that days of sinner will be cut short. You see them dying young. You see some young men dying young, young ladies dying young. They say, Hapa, what happened? If God will smite your mouth, if you are not careful. Because why? The wages of sin is what? It's dead. There's no two way. If that break the hedge, the serpent will hit him. If I break the hedge today, when you see me tomorrow, you will pity me. Because I know that the devil is looking for me. And for those who are going to heaven, with Jesus to go and reign, can I tell you this morning, that devil is watching your footstep. That's why we say, without Jesus helping you, they will catch you. He say many are the afflictions of life. God will know, God knows that I bring afflictions. So from that scripture, we say, let your garment be white. What's another thing? Let your garment be always white, clean life, and let your head lack no ointment. You must be a carrier of anointing. Your head must not dry of God's presence. So you heard David say, I have said the Lord already before me, because it's at my right hand. I shall not be moved. Let your garment be white. Let your head let go on what means. Live joyfully with the wife whom you love all the day of your vanity. Love your wife. Love your wife. Husband, love your wife. Wife, love your husband. If it has been fighting and all this kind of thing, I think it must come to end today. Because it that shall come will soon come. <laughs> Azumi. <laughs> <laughs> on the day you don't know that Jesus will come and you and your you and your wife or you and your husband on that day you woke up in the morning and say give me money for food give me money for food give me, and uh, you jack your husband and your husband jack you 
and there is a trumpet from heaven. You are the first one that will go, man. Jesus said, leave them, let them continue to fight. You, my saint, let's go. Because the kingdom of God is not for fighting. It's for peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. Father of the house, love your wife. Mother of your love, love your husband. Don't go and be carrying women. Hey, you are carrying women. Some of you, maybe you have another wife outside. <laughs> Let me tell you something. This I will tell you this clearly this morning. And I will not hide anything. Many people, they claim to be members of the chapel of redemption. But a day is coming when we say we don't know you. When we know that you have gotten another wife somewhere, and something happened to you, and they say, he's a member of the chapel. I say, sorry, in chapel of redemption, we don't marry two wives. So now only one will they marry. So we don't, it's another church where they marry two wives. It's not a member. You are going to see something. A day is coming. Some of you will come for prayer, we come for this, we come for that. We, you don't see you. You only come to church once in three months. And after the third month, you went away. Another two months, you come and you say you are a member. You are not a member. Oh. You are not a member. God knows his own people. So that, it, so that we don't offend you. I say, and that pastor says, doesn't know me. I don't know you. I don't know you. You come to church. You are just a spectator. You know, in football field, you they play football every day. Whenever Ranger and IICC is playing, is it every day? Whenever, uh, what do you call it, Chelsea and Man, you are playing, do they play every day? They play maybe once or twice in a month. And you see people in the stadium once or twice. You are just a spectator. You are not a member. So that you're not offended. Because we offend many people. You are not standing for Jesus. We don't know your stand. We don't know your spiritual standing. We come for a meeting. We don't see you. You go on your way and anything happens to you. I say, I'm going to church to help. Nobody will help you. Because those that belong to God, the wall of fire of God, always surround them. The Bible says, God's eyes upon is upon the righteous. So live a life that even when you die, we can support you and say, ah, the brother has gone to glory. He has lived a wonderful life. And the testimony of men sometimes is God's testimony. So when you live a life that pleases God here, and we see your fruit, we see things God is doing in your life, even before you have a problem, we rally around you. Because we are the same brother. We are from the same, we are from the same dynasty. But when you say, I'm a member, you walk in, you walk out, you walk in, you walk out, we don't see you, we do anything you feel like doing, and something happened to you, you are just on your own. Is the church say amen? I know you will not like to say amen to that. But that is a fact. That's a fact. Anything happened to you, not according to the word of God. We hear that you have committed something somewhere and you carry something and it's all terrible and you went out of God's will, you broke the hedge and you are expecting the church to be running a task for you. We will never do that. We will never do that. It looks tough. It looks tough. But that is the kingdom of God. Jesus said, I know my sheep. And what happened? My sheep do what? So they know themselves. They know themselves. I may not need to know you, but God speaks to me through the Spirit to know you. So when you stand firm, like we used to say, when we walk with the Lord in the light of His world, what a glory He shed on our way, on our way. When we do His good way, are in a bad with dusty. Uh, and we go who we trust and obey, brethren. Uh, all the way to be happy, than to trust. Husband, love your wife. Wife, don't say because your husband has no money, you are not making boyfriend, male friend outside. It's a sin. 
It's a sin. It's a very big sin. <laughs> God forbid. I am going somewhere, and my wife is going somewhere, and God for, that's why I say God forbid you. Yeah. Ah. And I met my wife, and my wife said, Excuse me, bro, Joshua, this is my boyfriend. I just got him three days ago. I would just say, boy, good, 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 good. Is that what I say? No. She's lost. She's gone. Once a man step out of God's grace, he's lost. As Satan will follow him. The Bible says Israel has cast off a good thing, and therefore, enemy will pursue him. I pray Satan will not pursue you. As I pray Satan will not pursue you. Husband, love your wife. Wife, love your husband and respect them. That is God's word for you. Don't say because you have money more than your husband. I say, come, come, come. Oh, yeah, come and claim my shoe for me. You are telling your head to clean your shoe. You are telling your husband to come and clean your shoe. He said, don't you know that the Lord has brought the prospect of this house upon my hand? Because of this, the Lord has turned things around. So you are now the wife. I am the husband. If you are the husband, truly, truly, go and give back to a child yourself. Let us know. We should not turn this counsel of God. Anyone that break the word of God, the word of God will break him. The word of God is unbreakable. When you break the word of God, it will shatter you. The Bible says, I have laid in Zion. Anyone that stone roll on to, he will smash him. Anyone that stone on, anyone that roll upon the stone, he will scatter him. So anyone that do anything against God's, God's word, is preparing for death. If I do anything against God's word, I'm preparing for my funeral. It means I'm going. The word of God abided forever. So that scripture says, live joyfully with your wife. No fighting. No cut. This is not the time to fight again. This is not the time to begin to fight your wife and fight your husband and say this one and say that one and say this one. Many, many, many useless things that doesn't need to fight upon. And you know when fights begin with your husband and wife, do you know what Satan used to do? Satan will just take chair and sit. He will say, Beatrice, touch his nose. So you hear some women very fast, they just put just a hair like this. And he say, Thomas, what are you looking at? Are you a dumb, are you a dumb Duma? Slap at once. Let one of the teeth come out. And before you see, the whole house is set on fire. And devil is rejoicing. Whenever there is a contradiction, whenever there is a trouble, whenever there is a war in the house, Jesus is not there. Oh. The devil has sat down. So why don't you do everything to make sure there is a peace in your family? He said, as much as in line with you, seek peace with all men. With all men. House is not meant for fighting. House is meant for beauty. If you grab your wife before your children and you slap me and you slap her, you have registered something to that boy's brain. When he grows, he will not depart from it. Is that not the Bible? Come on, talk to me. Is that not the Bible? Eh? Is that not the Bible? He said, teach your child in the way he shall go. When he's growing, what happened? So when you beat your wife before your children, pa, po, pa, 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 oh, Lord, oh you call it a name. So when the boy grow, what happened to that boy too? He will not depart from it. He will not depart from it. As you leave a good example for your children, they will go along with it. When you leave a human example, they will follow it. So this morning, wife, respect your husband, given decent obedience. I'm not even say because in those days in Yoruba land, when a woman wanted to greet the husband in the morning, what did they do? So what did they do? You are not real. Are you hearing me? Are you listening to me? What did they do in those days? In Yoruba, I don't know of Igbo land, though, and I don't know of Hausa land. But in Yoruba land, when a woman wake up in the morning, 
The first thing, when she wants to greet the husband, it will say, Olowori me with the two legs on the ground. And that one will begin to bless her. The Lord bless you. The Lord help you. The Lord keep you. How many women will need that for wife, for husband and money again? How many women can need that for their husband in the morning again? When, when the, some women wake up and their husband is snoring, ah, ah, is this yeah, stand on is this like this? Is this snoring? Lazy man. You don't know that they don't break. You say oh, 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 oh. Things have changed. Once that fear of God disappears, everything turns upside down. What keeps a man moving on the way to Calvary, on the way to heaven, is godly fear. How shall I do this? How can I do this? How can I go and sleep with somebody's wife? How can I torture somebody's child? How can I do this? Ah, how can I do this? Even though men are not seeing me, the Lord is taking record. How can I do this and scatter my future? And because of how can I do this, it's keep many of us moving on the path to journey. How can I do this? Somebody was asking me, he said, is it bad to hug, to hug a lady in the public? You know the meaning of hug? It just you say, ah! Is it your wife? No, I'm asking, is it your wife? If you are hugging a woman, it means you are going to be hanged yourself very soon. You will soon be hanged. Satan will hang you because you will not know the day you are going to hug a, lepro, a leprosy woman. You, are, you don't know the day you are going to, to hug epileptic woman and they transfer epilepsy to you. You know you are already finished. Keep yourself and say free from every appearances of evil. That's where immorality starts. He said, I just hunger and affection come into my body. You are already finished. Something has gone wrong in your life. As much this has been transferred, it begins to pursue you to pursue several people. You know your dead days is very close. This is the word of God for you. Let every partner stick to themselves. One man, one wife, even if your wife is not beautiful. Why, why are you saying, is it now is not beautiful? The day you are married, is she not beautiful? Because some bacteria and spirogyra, they are looking for you. What will Amoeba do for a man? What will spirogyra, what will bacteria do for a man? What does bacteria do in a life? Eh? It damages your intestine. Bacteria, all those guys you see, all those, they are just ready, eh? And they will talk as if they are they are from London. Ah, these are ghosts and Janu. And your portion and Janu at the expense of your eternity. Will you not return back this morning and say, God, your will must be done in my life. I will follow the law. I will not follow the devil. Doesn't matter what Satan is doing. I have decided to follow the law. Nothing will distract me on this journey. It takes a man of determination to get to paradise. You are not determined, you are going nowhere. Take note of this world. It's life and the spirit. Except for the word that spoke to you. They are spirits and they are life. It's life and God spoke to you this day. Let's finish this message. It's just opening. The devil must not have a space in your life anymore. You must close every part of your life from now. Access to your life by the devil, he will ruin your future for you. Access by the devil to my life as a student, he will ruin my life for me. And I don't want to die before my time. There are things I must do for God before I go. Ah, I begin to look at people like Paul. I won't talk about him today, but there's no time for me. But can I tell you, those people that submit to the will of the devil, their life cuts short. It cuts short their life. It's the only way you know that your future is glorious. He will work against you, manipulate you, and cut short your life. What do you gain in working in sin? What do you gain in working in morality? 
What do you gain working on righteousness? What do you gain in telling lies? What do you gain in deceiving people? What do you gain in deceiving your husband and wife? What do you gain in doing that? Don't you know that you are just a grass and everything shall return to vanity? Today, return to God and He will return to you. He said, Return to me and I will return to you. I think I will stop here. But go and read verse 11. Whatsoever your hand finds to do, do it with all your power. For there is no work, no device, no knowledge, no wisdom in the grave where I am going. Finally, will you decide for whom you will follow? Decide for the man you will follow. If it is God, let follow him. If it is the devil, go your way. But as for me and my family, we shall serve God. Iniquity will not ravage me anymore. I am not a son of perdition. I don't want to follow the way they go. Many will follow the way of perdition, but I will not join them. I have determined to follow the law. Shall we rise upon our feet? <laughs> I've gone that far away from God. Now I'm coming, oh, uh, the path of sin I've traced so long. Oh, Lord, I'm coming, eh, oh, coming to the Lord, coming, oh, I'm coming today, oh, never more to long. Never more to roll back that great ah, I will be that ah, I know I'm coming in home I've walked, I've walked that far away I know I'm coming home Oh my God, that path of sin I've so long I know I'm coming will you come to the Lord I come I never more to rule by the grave by the grave I, I, I will be that Today, Lord, I'm coming. Hey, oh, ah, 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 coming to the Lord. Coming. Hey, oh. Will you come unto the Lord today? The Lord is challenging you to come to Him. Enough is enough of work with the devil. Oh, ah. I will be the all of You pray? Young lady, will you turn to God this morning and start sanctifying your body? And not put your body for on the altar for useless men. Young boys, will you stop those habits that is not of God? Smoking, womanizing around the earth, a very short time to cut your life. Will you stop that nonsense this morning? And let God come unto your life and will repair the damaged life. It doesn't matter how far you have been damaged, <laughs> there is still a room for repairing this morning. The repair, the repair of life is here. Don't allow them to continue to damage you because the end shall be worse than the beginning. Can we bow down and say, Father, I return to you this morning with all my life, with all my spirit, with all my soul. 
I don't want to be damaged anymore. The damage enemy has done in my life is enough. I'm returning back to my Savior. Can you beg the Lord this morning? Father, please forgive me. Forgive me. I don't want to perish. I don't want to be lost. I don't want to go to hell. Ah, how can I go and start stinking with sinners, stinking sinners in hell? When the Lord has shown me the path of life, can you beg the Lord, Father? I'm returning to you this morning with all my life. Devil, leave me alone. I don't want to go with you anymore. I want to move with Jesus, the Son of God, the man of Calvary. Tell the Lord this morning, Father, I return to you with all my heart, with all my spirit, with all my soul. Lord, I return to you. And you are walking right, tell the Lord to strengthen your faith. I will not fall by the way, sir. God's grace will be sufficient for me. Thank you. Thank you. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' name, we are praying. Have you discovered your emptiness, nakedness, and helplessness? Do you want Jesus to come into your heart with all his fullness and sweetness? Then pray this prayer genuinely from your heart. Lord Jesus, I have hitherto followed my own ways. I am a sinner worthy of death, but you die that I might be saved. Lord Jesus, forgive me and have mercy on me. Come into my heart and take your place. Today, I surrender my life unto you as my personal Lord and Savior. Write my name in the Lamb's Book of Life. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. Amen. If you have genuinely said this prayer, you are now a child of God. Thank you for watching and listening to today's message. We hope you've been blessed by today's message. For inquiries and counseling, please call 0803-314-2266-081-254-040-68-0803-599-5034 or like our Facebook page on www.facebook.com slash Chapel of Redemption International Ministries. You can watch, listen, or download our messages on www.youtube.com slash Chapel of Redemption International Ministries. Chapel of Redemption International Ministries. Jesus only is our message. God bless you.